Welcome back to Byline. Here's what United States President Joe Biden just said to an audience in China. Your policy has been one which I fully understand. I'm not second guessing of one child per family. The result being that you're in a position where one wage earner will be taking care of four retired people. Not sustainable. Well, yeah, not sustainable. And I'm joined now by Dave Quist, he's director of the Institute of Marriage and Family Canada. And Dave, I wanted to put to you that what the Chinese did and what Mr. Biden can't bring himself to judge wasn't an error of mathematics. It was a fundamental philosophical error. They thought people were a problem, not a solution. Right. And the pro now they have a terrible problem because they don't have enough people around to help them out with it. So this is something I would say we should judge. His, his comments are, are short-sighted and they certainly don't look at the, the overall picture of a social engineering change that has created an enormous problem. 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago, China created a one-child policy. Being the cultural uh, uh, norms that they had, they started to abort baby girls primarily. They started to uh, not acknowledge baby girls. And so w between coerced uh, uh, sterilization and forced abortion, uh, we have an enormous shortfall of young women in China, or a surplus of young men, depending which way you want to look at it. Uh, at this point in time, they have millions of young men who are growing up who have absolutely no hope of, of ever being a, uh, a husband, of likely ever being a father. Uh, they have enormous uh, problems in terms of the number of people that are going to support their, their, their elders in, in uh, the years to come. And, and the, it's just wrapped with, with enormous problems, as you can only imagine as, as you go through this. Yeah, and one of the interesting things, you brought up something that uh, the vice president didn't touch on, and that's not what they did, but how they did it. Mm -hmm. You know, a one-child policy, as though the government of China had said, say, have only one child, and all right. the Chinese had said, long live communism, we'll just have one child. Right. That's not how it happened. It no. was an enormously coercive, intrusive, mm -hmm. and unnatural policy. Absolutely. The, the, the culture that they have is largely dependent on, on their children. That is their old age security. Uh, less so here where we have a, uh, either we save through RRSPs or no uh, old age pension plan or something like that. They depend on their children. And so what they've created is a, is a top-heavy demographically. Their, their aged people are getting older, as, as we all do. And, of course, what that is going to do is they have a one child supporting four elders, and that just simply is not going to be sustainable. How they arrived at that point is, is draconian. It's black, back to the dark ages in many senses, where they, they forced people to simply not have children through sterilization, or in the cases where they had a second child on the way, they forced abortions, or tacitly, they force some couples to say, what, is, what are we having as a young child? Is it going to be a boy or a girl? And if it was a girl, they would abort it and, and therefore try to have a male, which could support them in their old age. So they've created this enormous social monster in their backyard right now. As you, I'm going to take one issue, you said back to the Dark Ages. I want, I want to stand up for the Dark Ages here. <laughs> in the Dark Ages, times were tough. But true. people welcomed children into That's the true. world. Even knowing how much trouble there was going to be, a birth was a happy event right. most of the time. And in China, they managed to make an unhappy event. Right. And this is part of this larger thing. Oh, there's a, there's a population explosion. There are too many people. Mm -hmm. They're just going to eat everything. They're like locusts on two legs, which I think is a very anti-human point of view. It, it is debased the quality of human life to a level that we've never seen before, so incredibly low. It, it also creates other problems. Where are they going to create their future generations as well? You know, with, with the enormous population explosion that they expected, that they've only seen it primarily on the male side. And so at some point, they're going to see this demographic shift dropping off. They're, they're going to see enormous numbers of, of young men um, in their old age, you know, 40 and 50 and 60 years down the road, where they're going to create further problems for themselves. Their, their population is going to drop off the face of the earth. There's going to be an enormous number of people that say that's a good thing. But in fact, I'm not sure that they, they have a, a feeding problem as much as we'd like to believe. I think we have a, a food distribution problem around the globe in many cases. But in China, they, they've created their own problems at this particular point. The, the issue of, of the abortions, the coercion, the, the sterilization is going to last them for many years to come. So in many cases we're seeing uh, Chinese families uh, trying to leave China if they can financially afford it. We're, we're seeing them sending their children away to university in North America, or Europe in, in many cases. In many cases they're trying to get them to stay there because they know if they come home they don't have the future values that they're, they're, they're seeing in North American or Western Europe countries right now. Now let's let's go somewhere controversial for a change here, because one of the other things with this extreme gender imbalance, which again you'd think would annoy progressives, although mm -hmm. they somehow seem not to be very bothered by it, 
you have a host of unmarriageable young men. Right. And I would have thought that the research that you do indicates that this is a, a troublesome element in your population now, never mind what it's going to be 40 years from now, that th these are not people who contribute to your country being very livable. There has been some research and some projections of what do you do with several million young men? How do, you, how do they fit into the, the scheme of society? Where do they fit in the culture? Do you create jobs for them? Well, that's an enormous number of, of jobs that you have to create. Um, Technology is changing. Do you create armies with that number of men? And if you do, what do you do with that size of an army as well? Uh, in, in, in terms of the balance of, of uh, societal norms, they're way out of whack because society normally has, around the globe, about 106 boy babies versus 100 girl babies. Right now, the, the, the juxtaposition in China is about 106 to 91. And so the, the shifts in, 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 in demographics has been not just in numbers of demographics, but in, in male-female imbalance as well. Because nature's way is just that, that boys are more prone to have accidents or die in violence, and that this 106 to 100 has tended to produce exactly. one husband for every wife throughout history. Exactly. But Men tend to, to not live as long as our, as, our, as our female counterparts as well. And so those all have created what has been balanced over the long term. However, the Chinese have taken an enormous social engineering uh, uh, experiment and they've changed everything in this and it's going to have consequences. Now, having said, is it not odd, now you said all that, that someone like Joe Biden, who's been around for a long time, he's been in the American Senate since the early 70s before becoming vice president, right. that he wouldn't have some reservations about this? Doesn't that seem to you rather odd? It, it's a landmine he didn't need to step in. I, I mean, if he's going to step in it, he needs to say, you have a problem here, you need to be changing some policies here. We recognize in, in North America, in the U.S., that, that we need to be supporting our elders and we can't do that through fewer people in, 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 a, in a gender balance. Um, so he's, he's upset people, certainly at home. I mean, all the, the Republican uh, presidential candidates have all stepped into this in the last 24 hours here as well. He's, he's also uh, tried to appease the Chinese by acknowledging their their policy, but the Chinese know that they have a problem on their hands right now as well. So he's, he's stepped into a, a landmine that has no good balance for him as well, no good answer. If he was a Republican, it might have been a gaffe. Dave <laughs> Quist is director of the Institute for Marriage and Family Canada. Thanks for being with us.